Hi guys, welcome to ESOM. Hi, once again, welcome and thank you so much for uh, watching this video today. Okay, this week I'd like to talk about a wine again, but this is called Chianti. What do we know about Chianti? Well, you guys know that it's a red wine, but actually, did you know they also make other stuff like white wine and also sparkling wine? But I'm not gonna cover these two wines, just I want you to know you know it. What we'll be doing today is to tell you a little bit more about the red wine itself as well as what is really Chianti before anything else. And then I will take you through the whole legend of the black rooster or cockerel. Depends where you are. Chianti, what is it? Before anything else, Chianti is an area within Italy. Precisely, you've got a region called Toscani and in Toscani you have Chianti. There are two ways to see Chianti. There is Chianti as a whole, as, as, as an area, and there is Chianti Classico, which means, basically means historic Chianti. So Chianti Classico, in few words, um, is an area within Chianti, like a tiny area, which is, as I said, the historical part, and it was established in the 13th century. But Chianti is also a wine, as you now know. I mentioned our sparkling and white wines. Um, those are not the main things in Chianti. However, the red wines, it's a big star. The main grape used to make red wine there is Sangiovese. And Sangiovese is tiny berries. It makes wine with um, a lot of red fruit character, if you want, and it takes, eight, it takes oak aging okay. However, most Chianti are made to be drunk pretty young, so the oak is not very overpowering. It's more like, it gives a little bit of smoke to the wine, and also a lot of freshness to it. It's nice, for sure, it makes your mouth watery. And that's kind of red wine, are more on the medium. They are not too full, like in Australia or in the US. They are much more, are much lighter than that but they make long, great wines to go with, uh, actually, Italian food. Talking food, what you can match your Chianti with. Typically, you will do it with a rich sauce, and principally tomato. Chianti and tomato sauce will match it superbly. It's normal, it comes from the same country. Most tomato dishes are made there. Lasagna, pizza, lasagna again, tomato in your bolognese. Tomato is everywhere, and yes, it works very well. Both are matching superbly. Now, as well, the other stuff, which is very nice, it's that Chianti matches very well with meat as well. Just take it simple. Put your meat in a pan, just like cook very quickly, keep it a little bit, uh, you know, like more onto the medium, not too cooked, and then you can add a little bit of salt on top of it, a bit of black pepper, and bang on, you got that. Matches pretty, pretty well with your, your Chianti. You will see sometimes on labels, it will be written Chianti DOC, which is which means that the wine has been uh, following the, the rules. Sangiovese grape has been used to make this wine. Sometimes on the label you will see written Classico, Chianti Classico has got different rules. Very similar but just different stuff. For example, the blend for a Chianti Classico needs to be at least 85% of Sangiovese. It can be less than 85% for a basic Chianti. A Chianti Classico does not mean that the, this wine will be better than a normal Chianti. The quality doesn't depend on name, it depends all about winemaker and also the person who work in the vineyards. This is where quality in wine in, as a whole lies. I also mentioned that there are sparkling wines and white wines made. Most sparkling wines are made for local consumption. Most of the time, like, you know, stuff made in a garage. Very rare that uh, sparkling wines are actually shown to the world in the Chianti area. And then in terms of white wines, they are a little bit more exposed. You can find them in some restaurants outside of Italy, actually. Uh, and the grape variety will be called Trebbiano. Okay, that's it for what Chianti is. Now let's talk about the legend. Back in the 13th century, two cities, small, say what we call now town really, Florence and Siena, were fighting constantly. They were fighting to know which part of the land was belonging to whom. But at some point they were just tired of fighting, you know, and so they decided to make something a little bit less bloody and a little bit more competitive. In a way, like, they organized a horse riding competition. The scene is pretty simple, you know. They took a knight, their best rider, from each side, so one in Florence, one in Siena. And on a specific day, four days after the rules were set, the knights would be leaving their respective city center and ride towards their enemy's city. And where they would meet would be the place where the border between the two cities would be decided. To decide on when they would start the ride, the rule was simple. The song first notes of the cockerel in each respective city, the rider will be able to go, able to go as fast as he can. But there was a trick. 
Florentines took their rooster. They took the most beautiful they had, the bigger one, the one with beautiful deep black color. They put the poor animal in a box. They left it for the four days remaining until the competition without food or water. Just left it like that. On the D-Day, the night just before it, released the cockerel. And bang! The cockerel gave everything he had. It was singing like a maestro. And it started to wake people up. It was only around 2 to 3 o'clock in the morning. Like two or three hours before the time it was supposed to actually run in a normal day. It gave them the Florentine night to leave much earlier than his opponent. The result is that the Sinese rider just like literally rode for a little time really. He ended up by him meeting the Florentine rider only 20 kilometers away from Siena. It literally shrunk the area, separated them too, and it made of Florence the biggest city, Chianti at that time. And from there was born the legend behind the black rooster, the black cockerel, who made of Florence the biggest city in whole Tuscany. Hi guys, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed that. And as always, I will invite you to subscribe, share, and of course, I talk about the video to people you think could learn from it. The main target of ESOM is all about teaching you something which you can use in the future, but always in an easygoing manner. You know? If you're a sommelier and you have to talk about Chianti and trying to sell your Chianti, it would be much easier for you to sell it now you know the legend of the black rooster. Use the story because stories sell. In a restaurant, like anywhere, stories sell. Use it. You will see the changes in your approach in your restaurant and with your clients. So I would just invite you to subscribe to the channel, share it with friends, and of course, comment below and let me know if there is something you'd like me to talk about. I've had people asking me to talk about this specific region, Chianti, so there you go, I've got it all done for you. You can see here and there different link which are uh, sending you back to some videos I've made in the past. Watch them, keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. Another thing for you guys, I will be talking in the future about some uh, very specific thing. Have you ever heard of Phylloxera. Love to tell you more about this. Phylloxera is, in few words, what has nearly wiped out the world of wine. It was at the late 19th century in the Victorian era. It has been the worst nightmare ever for, uh, for winemakers. We'll talk about that next week. I'm very much looking forward to get started on this video for you guys. Uh, until then, don't forget again, like, subscribe and share. I wish you all an excellent week and a beautiful Sunday.